Hey everybody, welcome to the Tiny Lab on the Proof is Possible Tour in St. Augustine here with American Treasure Neil Moyer once again, who helped to air seal this Tiny Lab. Neil, thank you very much for being here. Absolutely. Um, and you brought toys, which I'm super excited about because he told me about these. And I was like, you have to please bring those back because we need to show people. So, uh, this is a little prototype for something that you might have known as the House of Pressure. And if you're an energy geek or a home performance professional, you've definitely seen the grander version of this, uh, either on the internet or in person. Will you please tell us how you came up with the idea for this and how it works exactly? Well, this was put together back in the late 1980s. And I was an energy contractor and dealing with air sealing and pressures in buildings most people didn't understand, so I had to have some way to visually demonstrate it. And so, after many trial and errors, I finally come up with, with this, um, and it, it does work. So, basically, it's a single-story house, a typical Florida house, uh, slab-on grade, um, relatively tight for, uh, for housing stock. <laughs> and it has, it's a little single-bedroom, one-bedroom house. It has a main body, which is... Um, on this side and it has the bedroom on the other side. Uh, the air handler duct system are all exterior, which is typical for Florida houses. And what would, we'd find is that houses are affected by various pressure drivers, whether it be wind. So for example, if I make some wind on this side, you see the little ribbon moving back and forth, but also it's moving on the other side as well. So this pressure difference is passing all the way through the house. Now, what happens is that in Florida, we really like air conditioning. So we'll turn on our air conditioner. And what's supposed to happen is that the air is supposed to come from the main body to the return, pass through the air conditioning unit, air handlers filtered, cooled, etc., and then goes back to the house and the cycle repeats. And if you notice the curtains, both of them, they're just kind of hanging there. They're not really doing much of anything, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. This is a closed system, it's closed loop. It's supposed to take the air from the house, cool it, heat it, put it back, round and round it goes. What we found in Florida, though, is that we had a lot, a lot of return side leaks. And if you'll notice, with the return side leaks, and all I've done is added a little leak to the return side, now I'm pulling hot air. It could be from the attic, it could be from a crawl space, or it could be from outside. Running through my air conditioning system where I'm now trying to cool Florida, filter Florida, doesn't work very well, delivering it to the house, and what it does is it pressurizes the house. So you're adding more air to the house than you are taking away from it. Absolutely. You're adding from adding else outside well. air. Okay. Don't know don't necessarily know where it's coming from, because it's leakage. I don't know where it's coming from. But as far as the house is concerned, our houses really liked it because I'm blowing cool, dry air through all the cracks, crevices, and holes. So it dries out our buildings. All right, so we can get smart and we can fix uh, return side duct leakage. And notice how quickly the ribbons return pretty close back to neutral. And real houses, same thing. The other leak that we have is a supply leak. So let me add a supply leak. Now I'm taking this air conditioned air and I'm blowing it to the outside or I'm blowing it into the attic, or I'm blowing it into the crawl space, depending on where this duct and its leak is located. The impact on the house is now the house is running negative. So any crack, crevice, or hole existing in this building is now pulling in outside air. Well, imagine if you have a vented combustion appliance inside this building, like a gas water heater, for example. Now that vent pipe is acting as an air intake, and that may not be the best thing to have happen. All right. So we and, can, and the implications, just for anybody who's not clear on that, is that you might start breathing carbon monoxide, monoxide. which is or, disgusting and not good for you. Or you could, worst case, have flame roll-up, mm -hmm. and that's really bad. So that could happen. So we can fix supply side leaks. Notice when I fix the leak, the house goes back to neutral. Now, there is another leak out there, which is... What? I know. Amazing. More? Yes, there's more. Wait for it. I can have equal leaks. So I'm pulling air from outside, <laughs> cooling it, heating it, dehumidifying it, and blowing it right back outside. So now here's the thing for your H, uh, should I say it, VAC contractors, HVAC, I'm slow with the V sometimes. <laughs> HVAC contractors, the, the one that is not up to speed on current processes, mm -hmm. um, what he'll do is he'll say, oh, you're not comfortable in your house? 
your unit's not big enough. Mm -hmm. So he'll add a bigger unit. And then you get somebody that understands the problem, they come and fix it. Now you've got a way oversized unit and you've lost all your dehumidification. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a problem. All right, so we got the house back to neutral. Everything looks good until at night we come in and we close the bedroom door. Notice what happens when I close the bedroom door. Now I have no way for the air from the supply to get back to the return. And so I'm using the world as my pathway. So I'm blowing it out, coming around, and back in. So I got part of the building under a positive pressure, part of it under a negative pressure. So you co-opted the entire universe yes, as your absolutely. HVAC pathway. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's actually. pretty cool. <laughs> so, I, you know, what I've been telling people to do, if you want to do this, or if you want to have equal leaks, um, please, let's everybody join in. Maybe we can cool and dehumidify Florida. Save the world, Save the ladies world. and gentlemen. So this was the prototype for the House of Pressure. Super, super cool. Thank you very much for bringing Absolutely. this. Um, so clearly this is awesome. What is even crazier is that number one, I don't have the new version of this, but this is uh, what Neil calls a flow pan. And I actually called it that too. I didn't know that we called it the same thing. Uh, it can be called an exhaust fan flow meter. You might know it as this. So if you have one of these, it's a readily available uh, piece of equipment now. And Neil made this out of plexiglass and rulers and oil fittings, oil right? Fitting. Awesome. Pressure fitting, yeah. So basically you uh, are testing, what are you testing with this? Just to make uh, sure everybody's clear. Same thing as with the flow pan is that it's exhaust flow. That's where it works the best. Um, exhaust fans exhaust and bathrooms. Fans. And, yeah. Yeah. Did you make this work over kitchen fans? Or was yeah. that always a problem back then well, too? Okay, because nowadays they, don't, they never fit. It's well, sad. you have to still do stuff. Though. Yeah, right. Okay. So you just open up the uh, holes to a certain size, and you've got the size, and you figure out what the multiplier is, and then you can figure out based on the pressure inside so the pan what the flow is. Awesome. Yeah. Super great. Uh, so if you care to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, and hours and hours of your time making one of these, this yeah. is like how you would do it. Yeah. Or you could just you buy, buy one, one. <laughs> which they make, which they make all over Much the place. Much easier. <laughs> That's very cool. What is this? Huh. This is a prototype of a duct blaster, or duct tester, more correct term. Which nowadays looks like this. Ah! Very shiny and manufactured and designed. Um, and Neil made one with the help of? Well, actually, this was made by Gary Nelson, Energy Conservatory. And we worked together with Gary back in, in I'm going to guess, mid-90s, the best I can remember. Um, and duct leakage was a problem. We were looking at that. At that time, we were doing the subtraction method with a blower door. Um, and for us in Florida, where our ducts are primarily outside, it was a very good way of doing it. But rest of the parts of the country, especially up north, ducks inside, the subtraction method doesn't, doesn't work because mm -hmm. your ducks are inside. Mm -hmm. um, and so we worked with Gary and looked at stuff, and then Gary came up with a, with a prototype, uh, a very complex device here, as you can see. Um, and so just as a tour here, we've got the uh, on-off, on -off, re reset, reset, speed control. Speed control. Okay, control. cool. Super awesome. Um, this is an inline fan, just like what you would buy today. Yeah, exactly. uh, here's the... Uh, connection to the plenum, is that right? The and would you connect it to the actual air handler or would you connect it to like the main return? Just like a duct tester, same, okay. either way. Cool. Now this green plate that's on it, I modified it so I could use a flow hood uh, capture hood. Mm -hmm. So it'd snap on here, that way I could just go up to it real quick. Awesome, and we have the calibration rings. Calibration rings. A, B, and C, baby. A, B, and C, I thought I stuck it in there, I can't get it out. There we go. So we have the, the three rings, A, B, and C. And this thing has actually been sitting in Neil's yes. museum in his office for so long that there's like other there's stuff, stuff in there. there. He was like, oh, this is like nice open yeah. <laughs> cylinder. Let's just keep some stuff keep in stuff there. In there. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing it's a pen jar. It's way too deep to get your pens back out of. So, Good idea. I could just stick pens I know, I know. It's like a penny, your, uh, your coin jar here. Yep. So I thought this stuff was super cool. And we don't have a museum for home performance yet. But this stuff would be the first three things into the Museum for Home Performance. So thank you very so much. So I should start a museum? Yeah. You could charge 
Admission? A crazy admission. Home yeah, for what? everybody wants to go. Home for Rose Museum. <laughs> let's go. Um, so people are traveling from around the world to come see this stuff now. Thank you very much for buying your tickets. We'll put you up at the Neil's house, <laughs> right? Because it's the Neil Hotel. Yeah, Neil Hotel. Thank you very much for building this Absolutely. and for sharing it with all of us. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more crazy stuff from home performance and around the country as we travel in the tiny lab. Tune in next time.